Douglas Mackey was sentenced to seven months in prison on Wednesday for the crime of insulting Hillary Clinton. Sending political opponents who mock the ruling class to the gulag is the kind of behavior one usually associates with China, North Korea, or some despotic Middle Eastern regime. Not anymore. Now it's the standard operating procedure of the United States government. While the West has prided itself on open discourse and liberal democracy, it's become increasingly common to see individuals in European countries go to prison for hate speech violations, such as using the wrong pronoun or speaking ill of Muslims on social media. Many of my European friends have told me how envious they are of the First Amendment, an explicit constitutional bulwark meant to protect the right of citizens to speak their mind without fear of state reprisal. It's now clear that this central pillar of American liberty has failed, and the United States government has become simply another totalitarian leviathan with the ability to crush dissent by force. Mackey, who went by the Twitter handle Ricky Vaughn, was put on trial for election interference by the Biden Justice Department after posting a meme he created during the 2016 presidential election. The meme jokingly suggested that Clinton supporters avoid long lines at the polls and cast their votes by text message. Prosecutors couldn't produce any evidence that even a single individual had lost the ability to vote by attempting to use the number featured in Mackey's meme. Nevertheless, the judge decided this totally victimless crime of meme-making warranted seven months in federal prison. Never mind that multiple Clinton supporters produced social media posts or videos making similar jokes, with one going so far as to tell Trump supporters to skip the line and text their vote on election day, Basically the exact same joke, but of course none of them were charged. The charges are fallacious and motivated solely by political vengeance. The government knows what it's doing is a front to the rule of law. That's the point. This is about sending a message, a flex of power meant for all to see. It's easy for mainstream conservatives to turn a blind eye to Mackey, an edgy internet poster who swam in the meme culture of a bygone election cycle. That's a mistake. While the seven-month sentence seems light compared to the 10 years Mackey could have faced for his crime, the precedent set is absolutely devastating. Mackey missed the birth of his first child due to the sentencing hearing, and the judge refused to issue a stay during the appeals process, so the meme-making satirist will be separated from his family as he fights this incredible injustice. Knowing that the regime will look for any minor legal justification to incarcerate anyone who mocks it will have a chilling effect on those who would use humor to push back on the absurdity of our ruling class. Comedy is far more threatening than any rational argument to our contemptible elites, and memes have proven one of the most effective ways to communicate how farcical the clown world we inhabit has now become. They aren't just going after Mackie because they're vengeful or petty. They're going after Mackey because he represents the synonymous internet gadflies who humiliate the regime and its grotesque character of piety on a daily basis. These days it's impossible to thrive with just one job. Between increasing living costs, paying off debts, and planning for the future, things like buying a home, building savings, and even going on vacation can seem like fantasies. If your goal is financial freedom, you could start taking on more hours at your current job, work towards a promotion or try putting your money into something risky like stocks, cryptocurrencies, or even a side hustle. But at the end of the day, do you really want to sacrifice time and energy that could otherwise be spent with your loved ones or on your hobbies just to make a living? Luckily, you don't have to hustle to reliably make more money. All you have to do is job stacking. Job stacking is the best way for regular people, regular employees, to unleash their earning potential and increase job and financial security. How? by working multiple jobs, but without burning out or more importantly, getting caught by corporate overlords. Job stacking allows you to reliably receive paychecks from multiple employers each month without having to work more than eight hours a day. You don't have to be in tech or any particular field or industry to do it as long as you can work remotely. With multiple paychecks and more time on your hands, you can save your way from having to work. You can more effectively resist the system by having her stay at home with the kids, perhaps even homeschooling your children so you don't have to expose them to the woke public education system. You can use job stacking to pay off any debts or loans that you might have and cast off the yoke that the financial system imposes on regular hardworking people. You increase your job security by not depending on one single paycheck. And job stacking is non-committal since you're not quitting your current job or making any radical changes to your life if you don't like it, you can just quit the other jobs and go back to what you were doing before. If you've thought about working multiple jobs, but you're not sure how to start or are afraid of getting caught, get the fundamental job stacking course today and learn all of the secrets on how to sustainably work multiple full-time jobs 
from the foremost expert on the matter, Rolf Halza, author of Job Stacking. Rolf has worked multiple full-time jobs since 2018, including hybrid jobs, and has condensed all of his experiences and wisdom into a single four-module online course so you can start proficiently job stacking without having to make mistakes, figuring things out on your own, or reinventing the wheel in the process. The course covers everything related to working multiple jobs from issues like legality of job stacking, how to handle your productivity, not work more than eight hours, and how to handle conflicted meetings. Go to jobstacking.com to get lifetime access to the course and all of its materials. You can join now, watch the videos, try out the exercises, and go through the process for 30 days. And if after that you're unsatisfied for any reason, just email Rolf for a full refund. Go to www.jobstacking.com and enter the promo code ORIN to get a special discount. There's nothing Western leaders love more than proclaiming their moral superiority. Freedom, tolerance, and democracy are held out as beacons of light with which to shame the despotic leaders of less progressive nations around the world. Amazingly, leaders like Canada's Justin Trudeau managed to keep a straight face while denouncing the human rights violations of Vladimir Putin, even as he throws Canadian citizens in jail and seizes their bank accounts for protesting COVID lockdowns. The United States has joined these ranks, making itself a self-righteous laughingstock as its leaders mouth empty platitudes about the critical nature of openness and liberty while imprisoning a citizen who makes jokes on the internet. Although Maggie's case may seem like a relatively minor news story, if it's allowed to stand, it would effectively mean the death of the First Amendment. Laws limiting hate speech or other woke nonsense are already dangerous, but the prosecution of an individual for political jokes strikes directly at the heart of the Constitution. Some forms of censorship, such as restricting the sale of pornography to minors, have always been allowed by the courts. But the one form of speech that the First Amendment has always held as absolute is the right to disagree with the government. It's unlikely that the government will suddenly start arresting everyone who mocks it on the internet, but the inconsistent application of the precedent is a feature of a narco-tyranny, not a bug. By abusing the wording of obscure laws and manipulating the judicial process, the regime can pretend that Mackey is a radical outlier and the rule of law remains in place. The illusion of a neutral process makes the masses far less likely to push back against tyranny, but the arbitrary nature of the process allows the regime to make it clear that enemies will be punished. Now we all walk on eggshells, hoping we're not indicted next. Mackey's conviction is just one of the recent events that do not bode well for the future of our constitutional order. Donald Trump, the leading political opponent of the sitting president, faces a slew of partisan legal charges brought with the obvious intent of influencing the 2024 presidential election. Dozens of Trump supporters face life-ruining charges for being involved in the events of January 6, 2021, despite the fact that leftist protesters regularly rioted, looted, and burned cities around the country in 2020 with little or no legal consequences. The FBI has designated MAGA supporters as the most serious domestic terror threat that America faces, while spying on Catholic services that might have too many Donald Trump fans in attendance. And all of this comes in the wake of a 2020 presidential election fraught with direct government interference by intelligence and police agencies as revealed by the Twitter files. If these events were unfolding in any other nation, we would recognize them as the consolidation of hard power against all domestic political rivals because that's what they are. The regime is very clearly attempting to tighten their grip on the domestic politics of the United States in anticipation of a backlash during the 2024 election, and they are willing to use intimidation and destroy the rule of law in the name of victory. The Bill of Rights might hold a sacred place in the American civic religion, but if our rulers can throw their opponents into jail on a flimsy pretext, then the document is simply an artifact of a constitutional order that is already dead. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, don't forget to subscribe to the Oren McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do that, please make sure to leave a rating or a review. It really helps with all of the algorithm magic. 
If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Substack or Gab, if you'd like to watch these shows on all tech sites like Rumble or Odyssey, the links to do all of that are down below in the description. And of course, you can watch all of my episodes and read all of my columns over at The Blaze. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.